Good afternoon. This is Sunday, April 11th, 2020. I hope everybody's had a good day thus far. Uh, this morning, uh, for the second Sunday in a row, we had our first face-to-face -face services since March when the pandemic hit at Bethel Amy Church in Corsicana. The second week in a row, we met outdoors. Uh, both Sundays have had great weather, and we've had a wonderful time together in the Lord. Hope it continues that way. We'll have to play it by ear, as they say. And we continue to pray that very soon the pandemic will be over, and we'll be able to resume uh our activities uh, by the grace of God. I brought a message this morning entitled Jubilee. And since most of you on Facebook Live and YouTube were not present here in Corsicana for this event, I'm bringing the message again now. Call your attention to the fourth chapter of the Gospel according to St. Luke. I'm going to read verses 16 through 22. I'm reading from the New Jerusalem Bible. He came to Nazareth where he had been brought up. He went to the synagogue on the Sabbath day as he usually did. He stood up to read. They handed him the scroll of the prophet Isaiah. Unrolling the scroll, he found the place where it was written, The Spirit of the Lord is on me, for he has anointed me to bring the good news to the afflicted. He has sent me to proclaim liberty to the captive, sight to the blind, to let the oppressed go free, to proclaim a year of favor from the Lord. He then rolled up the scroll, gave it back to the attendant, and sat down. And all eyes in the synagogue were fixed upon him. He began to speak to them. The text is being fulfilled today. Even while you're listening, he won the approval of all. And they were astonished by the gracious words that came from his lips. Let us pray. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for letting us come together. Uh, today, whether it be in person or be electronically. We thank you for providing communication for us to reach out and touch one another in the name of Jesus Christ. Now, Lord, open the hearts of all who hear that they might be blessed and that they might yield to you, to your Holy Spirit, even now. In Jesus' name, amen. In this verses we read today, you see that Jesus held the perfect attention to his audience. And then he declared, this day is this scripture fulfilled in your eyes. We see that at the beginning of his earthly ministry, our Lord, of, Lord of form, affirmed the Jewish ideal of the acceptable year of of the Lord, a year of the Lord's favor, a very sacred occasion which we call Jubilee. According to Leviticus 28, 8 through 13, thou shalt number seven Sabbaths of years unto thee, seven times seven years, and space of seven Sabbaths of years shall be unto thee forty and nine years. Then shalt thou cause the trumpet of the jubilee to sound on the tenth day of the seventh month. On the day of atonement shall you make the trumpet sound throughout all your land. You shall hallow the fiftieth year, proclaim liberty throughout the land, till all the inhabitants thereof it shall be a jubilee unto you, 
you shall return every man unto his possession, and you shall return every man unto his family. A jubilee shall that fiftieth year be unto thee. You shall not sow, neither shall you reap that which groweth of itself in it, nor gather the grapes in it of thy vine and undressed. For this is the jubilee. It shall be holy unto you. You shall eat the increase thereof out of the field. In that year of this jubilee you shall return every man unto his possessions. The biblical idea of jubilee has been around since creation. When God created the heavens and the earth, even before humanity's response of independence and rebellion, God introduced the concept of Sabbath, the idea closely related to Jubilee. God introduced this into the fabric of the created order. The Sabbath was initiated so that we, God's creatures, would remember and live out our dependence upon God, our Creator. It is God who gives us life and all that we need to live life in all its fullness. Sabbath and Jubilee are a reminder of the way things were originally, how they were created to be, and a sign what the future kingdom of God will be like. Both are manifestations of God's sovereignty in Israel and throughout the world. The Sabbath was established as a weekly reminder that the people of God must find rest and peace in God alone. God made us and God will ultimately redeem us from our sins. God will restore us to our rightful place as heirs of the goodness of creation. The sabbatical year, every seventh year, was a similar but more dramatic and demonstrative reminder. God alone is responsible for life and its maintenance. The sabbatical year was a demonstration of the justice and mercy of the sovereign God of all creation. The English term jubilee derives from the Hebrew word yobel, that is, from the Latin jubilacus, which in turn derives from yobel, meaning ram. The Jubilee year, which began on Rosh Hashanah, the Jewish New Year, literally the head of the year, was announced by a blast of shofar. The shofar was an instrument made from a ram's horn. During that year's Yom Kippur, Day of Atonement. A Jubilee is a time of celebration or rejoicing. It is derived from Leviticus 25.9 as the sabbatical year after seven cycles of seven years. The biblical jubilee is the original concept behind most other jubilees. The Christian jubilee is a special year for the remission of sins and universal pardon. The silver jubilee marks 25 years. Golden Jubilee marks 50 years. Diamond Jubilee marks 60 years. In Britain, 75 years in the United States, and 100 years in South Asia. The Platinum Jubilee marks 70 years in Britain and 75 years in South Asia. In Leviticus, a Jubilee year is mentioned to occur every 50 years, in which slaves and prisoners would be freed debts would be forgiven, and the mercies of God would be particularly manifest. Scholars suspect that the transfer of Jubilee obligations to the 49th or 50th year was a deliberate attempt to parallel the fact that Shavuot, or Pentecost, is 50 days after Pentecost and follows seven weeks of harvest. We do not know to what extent the laws of Jubilee were obeyed. 
as these laws implied that all of the 12 tribes lived in their own land, it appears the Jews who returned to Palestine after Babylonian exile largely ignored them. Concern about such negligence may have been one of the facts that contributed to the writing of the Book of Jubilees during the intertestamental period. According to this Jewish work, which was never regarded as scripture, it was part of what was called the pseudepigrapha, or writings with false superscriptions, never was it part of the Old Testament canon. Uh, according to Jubilees, Israelite history should be divided into sacred periods, known as Jubilees. According to chapter 2, verse 8, God established the sun as a great sign over the earth for days and for Sabbaths and for months and for festivals and for jubilees and all the seasons of the year. The writer of the work insisted that confusion results when people forget God's commandments regarding jubilees and other sacred occasions. In his outstanding book, Sabbath and Jubilee, Richard H. Lowry wrote, Sabbath and Jubilee offer a fresh angle for people of biblical faith to think theologically about spiritual, social, ecological, and economic limitations and possibilities. When God rules, the oppressed hear good news. The brokenhearted are bound up with loving care. Captives are set free, and prisoners emerge from dark dungeons, open their eyes to the glorious light of day. Liberty, peace, freedom from violence, these are signs of God's universal reign, announced by the raised torch of freedom. These traditions uh, root the call to justice in an abiding sense of God's gracious care and in personal and household disciplines of gratitude and respect. These orientations toward life are grounded in the fundamental worth of ourselves and of all human beings, created male and female, diverse but equal, in the images of God. Actions of justice are prayers of gratitude for abundant life lavishly given, and spiritual disciplines of contemplation and praise are ongoing celebrations of the just world that God wills and the just world we're called upon to build. When I was growing up, my pastor taught me that the Old Testament is the New Testament concealed while the New Testament is the Old Testament revealed. To this day, I believe that. In the Old Testament, the sound of the ram's horn signaled the start of Hebrew Jubilees with provisions for the cancellation of economic debt. In the New Testament, the praises of the heavenly host glorifying God declared the beginning of the Christian Jubilee and for the provisions for the cancellation of sin debts. In the Hebrew Jubilee, the ram's horn was used to signal the start of the new year. In the Christian Jubilee, Jesus Christ declared the newness of life made possible through him. In John 10.10, 10, he told us that he came that we might have life and that we might have it more abundantly. Finally, let us reflect on the fact that there can be no Jubilee without sacrifice. No Jubilee without sacrifice. The sweet sound of the ram's horn could never be heard until the life of the ram was sacrificed. Likewise, there could be no Christian jubilee without the sacrificial death of Jesus on the cross. Nevertheless, we need to take seriously the words of Romans 8.32, He that spared not his own son, but delivered him up for us all. How shall he not with him also freely give us all things? The Hebrew Jubilee was only a shadow. Now the perpetual spiritual Jubilee 
made possible through the death, burial, and resurrection of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. So participation in Jubilee, like so many other things in the Bible, have a very simple beginning. That beginning involves repentance and faith. If you will confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus Christ and believe in your heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. So if you want to participate in God's jubilee, then accept Jesus as your Savior today. May everyone have a blessed day and a blessed week. May the blessings of Sabbath and Jubilee be real to you and to all on the sound of my voice. God bless.